Good morning. How are you today? It is a gorgeous day out here in uh, Virginia. And uh, the walks are uh, a revivifying experience every day. Uh, however well or badly it goes. Uh, <laughs> up on the hill, we have uh, the ongoing hearings of whether or not Judge Barrett should join the Supreme Court. Uh, my favorite present associate justice is uh, Stephen Breyer. He was a professor for years at Harvard, and so he articulates very well what he's doing as a justice, what it takes, and so forth. And one of his concerns, and it should be ours, is how does a court command uh, respect for its decisions when it has neither sword nor purse to back it up. And I mentioned Brown against Board of Education the other day. That was a good example. And it took the president of the United States after, years after the decision to actually have it make effect. So if we, the people, lose trust in the court because it's political or arbitrary or unpredictable, then we've lost an important element of what makes our society work. Uh, we have a potential justice who, according to her testimony, can't decide uh, what it means if a president is above the law. She apparently holds very strongly the notion that a fecundated ovum is worthy of the respect as if it's a person when it's not. But the people who are persons, who may die and are dying, do not owe that respect. What am I saying? Well, the Affordable Care Act. Millions will die, not directly, but as a result of the fact that they don't have insurance for the different catastrophic and even the diseases that start out slowly that grow into something large. My wife had an infection years ago. And I can't imagine what would have happened if my law firm didn't have insurance that covered us. Uh, who can afford these amazing prices? She, she also is not for life. When you consider the women who will suffer if she does overturn Roe v. Wade uh, because of her belief that a fecundated ovum, the moment of conception, is a person that is more worthy than the woman herself. In fact, the senator the other day spoke about how a former wife of his had been told by a hospital that they wouldn't perform an abortion when the child was already not going to be delivered. And they said she should just await a miscarriage. But the miscarriage and that wait would have meant her death. And so a second hospital did perform it on the recommendation of a doctor, Soto Voce, from the first hospital. So th these are not imaginary problems. But her basis is we look at the Constitution and we try to figure out what they meant in 1787. Well, in 1787, they didn't consider abortion. They didn't have a notion of an Affordable Care Act. Women weren't people. Uh, if you consider it logically, it is a bizarre thing. So we have as recently as yesterday an example of what it means when the court doesn't make the right decision. One of our concerns is to have a census by which we determine representation in Congress, the distribution of funds to states that help them, uh, a whole variety of things. And because of the coronavirus, it's been difficult to conduct the census. Our family conducted it at a distance of about 12 feet with a volunteer who came by to conduct the census. But in cities, it's much more difficult density and other things. And the Supreme Court has cut off extensions to the census. This is a political decision. And this is what happens when power replaces reason and law. So the stakes are high. Are we going to be able to stop this nomination? Perhaps not. But it is instructive of why this election is probably the most important in many of our lifetimes. So uh, get out if you can. It's a beautiful day. And, uh, you know, remember to vote. Get your friend to vote. Contribute if you can. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.